Good afternoon, guys. It's Work and bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. And again, apologize for that strange video last night, guys. I don't know if it was uh, uh, me uploading two separate videos and one being in double time. I'm not sure how exactly that happened. I'm still not sure how exactly that happened, but uh, I will say I do apologize. And uh, yeah, it was very strange um, on the playback to hear myself sound like Alvin the Chipmunk. But uh, Alvin the Chipmunk. But uh, Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, moving on here, guys. By the way, a big, big, massive thank you to all the new subscribers. Also, a big, massive thank you to those of you that do leave tips. Um, and I, I don't know why, but since I put up my email address, guys, a lot of you have been asking me for private addresses to leave tips. And uh, certainly appreciate that the your anonymity. And uh, and and happy to do that. Um, but uh, but if any of you do want to leave public tips, um, when you do leave public tips, um, or excuse me, I should say, if any of you that do use the addresses that I have up there for tips, a big massive thank you, and uh, please let me know um, if you do leave me a tip. I'd certainly like to know so I can thank you publicly, but again, for those of you that just wish to remain anonymous, again, know that I thank you, thank you, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, I want to send a big thank you to Anthony, Anthony Cavallo, or Cavallo. Thank you very much, man. New subscriber. I do appreciate your tip. I do appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you very much, Anthony. All right, let's dig into why you guys are here. We're looking at Bitcoin, the U.S. dollar, four-hour chart on Coinbase. Pardon me. And the last time we spoke, guys, of course, we had broken up out of our wedge here. We had just taken out this uh, 12,400. And I told you guys, if we're zooming in here, looking at the uh, looking at our indicators here, of course, we were showing some uh, some hinting at some bearish divergence. Was not confirmed. Is obviously confirmed now. But this is why, you know, th there's two things. When you're looking at divergence, you've got a couple different things. You've got the, the people that will call out divergence on literally everything, no matter what. Divergence, divergence this. We're going to the moon. Divergence. We're heading back down to lower lows, divergence, divergence, divergence. Um, and yeah, typically you need to get confirmed divergence before it's actually before you actually really want to take a major trade off of that. That being said, just because it has not been has not yet been confirmed, when you have something like we did last night where it looked very, very obviously like it was going to get confirmed, don't be afraid to call that out and don't be afraid to tentatively start to trade off of that. Just make sure that you're putting in a stop loss in case that doesn't play out. So I just want to be very, very clear. It seems like we've got two extremes. We've got people on the one extreme that is saying, you know, my gosh, everything is divergence. You know, we're heading to the we're heading bullish divergence. We're going to the moon, bearish divergence. We're heading down to new lows. Those, or you've got the other extreme saying, well, it hasn't been confirmed. It's showing divergence, but it hasn't yet been confirmed, so you can't play it. You don't know what you're talking about because it hasn't yet been confirmed. Neither of those are correct. When you see something that is divergence that is not yet confirmed, it doesn't mean you ignore it. That, I mean, that, that, that's giving you a sign that, hey, warning, 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 we may be coming back down here. Yes, it's not yet confirmed. It may not play out, but warning, it's there. You may want to take notice. And that's what we saw last night, guys, and that's how we were able to call. That's how I was able to show you guys and tell you that very likely we're going to come back and break down here. I told you that I, w I wanted to actually see 12,400 start acting as support, and it did on the first pass. But of course, it did end up breaking down, and I told you that the the low that I could accept would be 12,000. This prior consolidation, we didn't quite get down to 12,000, guys. We actually bounced right around 12,100 and. Uh, five dollars to be very very precise twelve thousand one hundred dollars where we bounced and of course now we're trading back above that twelve thousand four hundred so we did have a nice bullish bounce here and I typically don't like to do this but let's go ahead and zoom in very 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 closely on the four hour here and let's go from the low of the breakout to our swing high this is the low of our consolidation pattern before we break out to our swing high we can see we bounced right around the 382 if we can take out this prior high and that's a big if guys we're not we're nowhere near there we're nowhere near there yet we're still trading within a range but if we can take out this prior high the prior high is at about twelve thousand eight hundred and thirty four dollars if we can decisively take that out then yes i'm very very bullish the fact that we only bounced right there at the 382 and again i typically don't like to draw fibs on structures this small but we are trying to figure out whether or not bitcoin is going to continue here and again you know i don't like doing it on youtube videos because by the time i get stuff like this up it's usually irrelevant that being said hopefully it just helps you guys learn how I'm trading how people trade in general um, and, and hopefully it just helps you increase your skills yourself um, but looking at that guys if we do end up bouncing right off the 382 and continuing up and taking out this high that is very 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 bullish so let's wait and see kind of how this ends up playing out as I said we're nowhere near there yet but I would say if we get a four hour open and close above I wouldn't even wait for this wick I would say above about uh, 12,000 
$750. The four hour open and close above that, yeah, it's a pretty good sign. We're probably going to take out this prior um, or this uh, this major area of support here. And of course, I've been pointing out this major area, excuse me, of resistance, pointing out this major area of resistance for quite some time, right around 12,800, 12,900. Um, that was going to be a, a, a major test point for Bitcoin. We haven't even technically hit it quite yet. Of course, we know a lot of people are front running this. So, uh, you know, it would make sense that they got out just shy of that, you know, just shy of hitting that, uh, that exact mark which exactly it would be at about twelve thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars so we were just shy of that at about twelve thousand eight hundred and forty dollars somewhere there about so no quite no uh, no um, surprise that we got a little bit of a rejection there let's see if we can continue to get this uh, momentum continuing up to the upside here of course my bias my bias does remain bullish even though we could pull back here in the short term we'll have to wait and see but again uh, it's looking pretty strong right now. If I zoom in here to the hourly, we can see that yes, indeed, we did. Even though we broke down here on quite a bit of volume, Bitcoin was able to rally, was able to bounce nicely, and of course, getting back above that 12,400, breaking up on a little. I'd like to actually see a little bit more volume here. Let's wait and see if we can get that confirmed a little bit more to the upside here. But as of right now, looking fairly constructive, guys. No reason to panic. Um, if we do end up breaking down below, Certainly, if we break down below 12,000, guys, then I'm going to get a little bit more concerned. I do think, as I said before, a drop down to 11,500, as I told you last night, would be very much on the table. And, of course, if we did break down, now that we do have some structure here, now that we do have some consolidation and we do have that pivot low, um, a confirmed pivot low on this tiny, tiny little microstructure, if we did take out that pivot low now that it's confirmed in there, that would likely indicate continuation to the downside, and that sits at about 12,100, somewhere thereabouts. So, yeah, if we take out 12,100, likely continuation down to about 11,000. Uh, 500, um, but uh, but I'd be very surprised if 11,500 did break. And as of right now, guys, as I said, my bias is leaning up to at least coming back up and testing this prior high, if not testing a little bit higher here at that 12,500 or 12,940, 12,930 dollar zone. And if we can break that decisively, guys, as you guys know, if we can break up above that zone, as you know, I think we're gonna. Uh, I think we're very likely going to come up and test at least 13,500, 13,800 that prior high. Now, zooming in, looking at the daily RSI, let me gonna get this so you can see this a little bit better. Looking at the daily RSI, I pointed this out briefly yesterday. We are sitting at about uh, six. Uh, 62.1 somewhere thereabouts that I believe is a very relevant zone um, as coming back looking at this daily RSI guys ever since uh, March the 27th it's pretty much acknowledged this zone um, on on uh, many, many times. In fact, came on, coming up here on March 27th, rejection right at that zone, and then we got a strong break above. Then we come back down, hit this zone, acted as support, nice little bounce, and then a strong break below, strong break above, and then coming back down, testing it once, testing it twice, testing it three times, and then again, a strong break below, strong break above, and then again, coming back down, testing it, bouncing once, strong break below, coming up and testing it, bouncing again, rejected, and then we just uh, we just broke back up uh, back up above it here. So typically, anytime you're going to get a major break, it oftentimes, as you as you can see in the past, it oftentimes when it does break, it does break very very strongly, um, either to the up or to the downside. So the fact that we have now broken above this zone, that you know, if I'm just looking at this historically, that would suggest some strength in this move. That would suggest possibly continuing up. Now every trend is going to break at some time. So this could this possibly break? Absolutely, 100%. Do we have a nice double bottom here, which also is bullish? Yes, we do, but that still doesn't mean we can't break that trend. So let's wait and see if that does continue. But again, that does just give a little bit more evidence in favor of the bulls on this move. Looking at the daily MACD, now typically I don't reference the MACD too much. Um, you know, the MACD is nice. It's nice to look at, but uh, especially on the four hour, not so much. You usually use it for uh, more for divergence than anything else. Uh, I mean, that's typically what it's uh, what it's used best for, in my opinion. Of course, people will have different opinions, but just for my trading style, you know, divergence is typically what I use it for um, more often than not. That being said, sorry guys, I keep clicking this. I don't mean to stand by one. There we go. Let's get there. We go working. All right. Um, but this is interesting. The fact that we we're now obviously seeing the signal line and the MACD line getting ready to have a fresh cross to the upside. We're looking at the daily here, um, and we can see, of course, the histogram uh, as as usual. Of course, as you know, as always, if you guys don't know how how a uh, how a MACD does work, you know, anytime you're seeing the histogram cross into fresh territory, of course, that's going to be um, um, you're, you're you're seeing the, the fresh cross of the MACD and the signal line. They both line up 
for those of you that don't know how to read the indicator um, and you haven't figured out, I'm sure most of you have. Forgive me for you veteran traders, guys. I know I say things that you're probably rolling your eyes and saying, hey, working, no shit. I understand. Oh, sorry, guys. I don't mean to cuss. Sorry for cussing, guys. I'm going to start having to do a tip jar every time I cuss. Don't mean to offend anybody here. This is going to be a family-friendly channel. But my point is there's all different uh, levels of traders on here that listen to this channel. Those that have no idea how to read a candlestick to those people that are veteran traders that are trading with millions of dollars. I understand that. And so I'm trying to speak to a whole different variety of people. So please indulge me, guys. I don't ever want to sound like I'm talking down to anybody. That's not my intent at all. But anyway, my point in this is the the MACD on the daily guys. I'm putting a little bit more weight on right now. We're, if, if we can get this fresh cross to the upside, if we can get that histogram crossing up here into bullish territory confirmed. Reason I'm looking at that is guys because we do we did have Pardon me. We did we did have the histogram ticking down to bearish territory, guys. Nowhere near as low as we did see as we saw last time, and this would indicate a strengthening in the market um, on this correction here. If we, if we can if we can continue up into bullish territory and have that bullish continuation, that would indicate a a, um, a strengthening in the market, given the fact that we didn't come down nearly as low as our prior um, as our prior histogram here. So let's wait and see kind of how this plays out. But again, this does bode well if we can continue for the upside here. It does bode well for the uh, for the bulls, and let's wait and see if we can get that fresh cross here on the daily. Daily volume sitting at about 29.2. So again, nice little uh, slow little uptick in volume from what we have been seeing. Yesterday we were at 20, uh, 23.4. Day before that we were at 19.3. So nice little uptick in overall daily volume. Again, does kind of uh, does kind of bode well uh, for the bulls here. Let's wait and see again if this can play out here. Looking at the four hour, uh, we can see that uh, we again we're we're, we're above the uh, the eight period moving average, guys. We're certainly um, seeing a lot more light between the 8.21 and 55. Again, that does bode well for the bulls. Does signal um, uh, strengthening of the market here. Let's wait and see how this plays out. And of course, we need to take out this prior high. Now let's go on the uh, on that that prior four hour candle. Uh, let's see. Looking at the daily, we are looking like we're coming up, testing the upper Bollinger Bands here. That's going to that coincides very very nicely with that prior high here. Um, actually, almost perfectly with that prior high. So yeah, could are we setting up for another strong rejection here? Let's wait and see. But this does this does bode well if we can if we can break above this zone decisively here. It may just be off to the races here, guys, because you can just see above this above our prior high. All we have is a wick here. We've got these two body the. Uh, the, the, uh, the body of the daily here closing right there at about that 12,940, 12,930, depending on your exchange. And if we can get a daily open and close above that, guys, or really, I could even, uh, nah, it would need to be a daily. If we can get a daily, at least a daily close, I'd prefer a daily open and close. That would suggest a whole lot of room to run to the upside here, guys. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to spread any FOMO here. I, I, that's not the intent of this channel. Certainly, we could get rejected here, guys. I think I told you my target. If we take, if we took out twelve thousand, I told you my next target was very likely going to be thirteen. We haven't quite reached thirteen. We're about a uh, hundred and sixty dollars shy of that thirteen thousand dollar target. That's about a percentage. That's not too bad. Um, but, uh, but again, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, but we have come close enough to that target. So yes, a rejection here is certainly possible. Let's wait and see how it plays out. But again, as of right now, guys, my bias still does remain uh, does remain bullish. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the weekly. We are starting to stretch out the upper Bollinger Bands on the weekly. Again, we're trading well above the wick of the prior week's candle. Again, nothing, uh, nothing but bullish here, guys. Nothing but bullish. Now remember, I am talking on the higher time frames. On the lower time frames, could we see a bit of a pullback, maybe to that twelve thousand dollar, even eleven thousand five hundred? Yes, that's certainly possible there, guys. But even there, I, um, if we take out that, uh, yeah, even if we take out twelve thousand seven hundred decisively, I, I would again have to even on. The, yeah, I'm a little more agnostic on the smaller time frames, but I'd start to have to lean bull, even if we do take out about eleven thousand, really about uh, really about tw yeah twelve thousand seven hundred. If we get a four-hour open and close above twelve thousand seven hundred, even on the smaller time frames, I would have to lean bullish, and I would even, I, you know, and that's more tactical. I would say that my bias is definitely bullish right now. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, but please don't, uh, you know, that that is just that's just my bias. That is not technical analysis. Uh, let's see. Let's look at longs and shorts. Longs uh, slowly starting to stack. Shorts slowly starting to stack as well. Nothing, uh, no major split there, guys. So again, uh, you know, some conservative people entering into their positions. That is healthy. Nothing too unhealthy about that at all. 
pulling out to the monthly chart. Monthly chart continues to look beautiful. I mean, the monthly chart just, it really does. Monthly chart just looks beautiful, guys. Um, no question about it. Uh, could we see a pullback here? Yeah, but I mean, we could see we could see a pullback all the way down to, um, you know, 10,700, which as you remember, guys, 10,700 is when I'll start to get a little more bearish again in the, in the, in the, in the midterm, I would say. At that point, if we take out 10,700, then I'm going to start to think that 8,500 is certainly on the table, but I am nowhere near there yet, guys. Nowhere near there yet. Um, but so yeah, as of right now, monthly looking extremely bullish. We are approaching the top of the Bollinger Bands here on the monthly. So again, watch out for a possible rejection there. Wouldn't be unheard of to see a little bit of a rejection there. But as of right now, guys, nothing, uh, nothing but strength. We're seeing the, um, on the monthly, the, uh, the, uh, monthly eight EMA getting some nice light between the 21, nice light between the 51 or the 55, you know, again, nothing but bullish. So how am I playing this guys? Basically, excuse me. Throat is parched, guys. Had to get a drink, drink of water there. Hold on one second. Okay, much, much better. All right, so how am I playing this, guys? Basically, I'm going to be watching. Of course, 12,400 is a relevant zone, guys. We can see that that was support. Support immediately turned into resistance, and it looks like it's acting again as support. Now, that's that's a, that's a, it's a very rough way, uh, rough way to uh, read that, and it's actually technically not correct, even though we can kind of visually see that's eh, sort of especially. Let me go in here to the hourly, actually. Yeah, actually, actually, I take that back. That is technically absolutely correct. I was kind of eyeballing it with the four-hour, but when we zoom in here to the hourly, we can see that is an actual accurate way to read that. I mean, almost perfectly, we can see that 12,400 acted as literally almost to the dollar support, broke down, resistance, 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 broke back up. And of course, we haven't quite come back down, but clearly that area is acting as a major support and resistance. So that being said, guys, if we do break down below this prior wick, now that we do have some structure here, if we do break down below about uh, 12,100, I, I very likely would get out. In fact, I'm going to put a stop loss probably at about uh, 12,070 ish, somewhere thereabouts. And I'm going to be looking to get back in if and when Bitcoin drops down. I'd probably start getting back in at about uh, 11,800, 11,850, looking for a little bounce there and probably um, ladder in all the way down to about 11,500, looking for a decent bounce at about 11,500, but not wanting to miss it um, uh, before that. Now, if 11,500 does end up breaking down, guys, then of course, I think it's going to get ugly, then I think that we have a good chance of dropping all the way down here to about uh, $10,650 ish, somewhere thereabouts. Now, might we have some support around uh, 11200 ish? Yeah. That's possible. It's possible we drop below there and bounce about there. But I think the probability wise, if we get a decisive break below 11,500, I do think probability would now shift down to about uh, $10,650. Of course, to the upside, we are going to be watching this major resistance that we do have here at about 12,930 ish, somewhere thereabouts, guys, right? Uh, you know, give or take about $50, the top of these two wicks on the daily. Um, once we get, once we get a decisive break above that, guys, then all of this becomes uh, very, very much important. Play between 11 or excuse me, between 13,500 and 13,800. So those are the major areas that I'm watching, guys. Let me go ahead and quickly get to your comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, Claw of the chicken. Love this guy. Says uh, the the name has been passed down for generations. Now nah, I'm kidding. I made it up in school with the intention of making some people smile. Then I never got rid of it. Might uh, and might never. Uh, we'll update you on the rest of the book. Yeah, let me know how the rest of those books go, man. That's a that's a, that's a hilarious name, man. Love that name. All right, Jake says I wish you uh, I, I wish I was your housemate and could watch you trade every day. You talk so much sense. Thank you for your videos. You managed to change my mindset in this video. Hey, thank you, Jake. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I don't think the wife would let you move in, man, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see. I can talk to her. We'll see. Uh, Scott Lee says uh, thanks for the follow up on my question. Really, uh, um, and really considering diving into trading more, uh, but I'm not quitting my day job. Uh, really thankful for your work responding to my question. Hey, my pleasure, Scott. My pleasure, and best of luck to you. Uh, Annalena says, uh, take a bow, work an excellent prediction. Thanks, Annalena. Appreciate you always stopping by. AALS says, uh, awesome. Thanks for working. Got my moon hat on, waiting to blast off. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, 12th root says, wow, uh, 12,000 to the cent. Yeah, yeah, I did hit that to the cent uh, last time. Uh, Blazing Dub says, uh, it's great you always reiterate that, uh, reiterate that you have to be willing to change your bull bear bias. More traders need to learn this. Yeah, more traders do need to learn that. Absolutely, guys. You have to be flexible. Uh, flexibility, we used to say in flying, flexibility is the key to air power. Flexibility is the key to anything. 
Um, so uh, yeah, you've got to be willing to change your bias. You cannot be willing to hold on to anything. Once technically you see a, a, uh, um, um, a once technically your bias shifts and technical analysis no longer supports your bias, change your bias. All right, T Todd says uh, thank you, thank you, Todd. Uh, John Snow uh, says tether printing fake volume longer cycles longer cycles. October is the bottom. Well, we'll see. I disagree. I disagree. I don't. Uh, yes, Tether is printing, but you have to. You have to also also consider that yes, Tether is printing, but that is also yeah. How do people get Tether? They get Tether by oh, stand by. They get Tether by uh, by buying. Now, is it backed one to one? No, it's actually. I think they found out that it was backed what uh, seventy percent or something like that, which is ten thousand times better than uh, than paper dollars are actually or than uh, than uh, the dollar is actually backed by paper dollars. So. <laughs> yes, I'm. And by the way, I am. Why am I defending Tether? I feel like I'm defending Tether. My point in all of this is that that yes, yes, Tether printing obviously possibly has something to do with that. But there are so many other stable coins now that let's say Tether went under tomorrow. Would the, would the market take a hit? Yes. Would everything go into the uh, USD coin and all these other stable coins? Yes, they would. So Tether is not the end all be all that it used to be. Um, so no, I don't think that we are in a bear market rally. Could I be proven wrong? Yes, I absolutely could. And if I am, I'll be the first to say it. Uh, Phil, the, Phil the Thrill says, ha, I don't understand why you laughed at JK's comment, but genuine laughter is always contagious. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, man, it was way he came across. It was just hilarious. Uh, let's see, Rabbi, I don't know what you're saying there. Uh, Young Lee says, Crown was looking at the quarterly price trend, and that seemed to paint the more uh, convincing case that the bottom is in, or better yet, that we are in a bull market. Also, all, only looking at previously bear market is too selective, in my opinion, as there were other bear markets to compare that with um, that were a lot, a lot shorter. The market was too different with uh, Mt. Gox. Fundamentals are different now, um, but we could see a big fallout from Tether, but that is not correlated with the overall bottom isn't in case, don't you think? Yes, I do think. Very, very good points. No question about it. Yes, I, I looked at the prior bear market because that on this on this prior video because that's exactly what everyone else is is, uh, is referencing. But your point is very well taken. We're we're not in the same market that we were in in any of the prior bear markets, including the one that everyone references back in 2013 to 2015. So yes, this is a totally different market, totally new asset. And trying to predict things now based on what happened then is like looking, look at the dot-com boom. You couldn't do it then, you can't do it now, it's too new. Yes, some of the things rhyme, no question about it, but, but acting like that's the reason that the bottom is not in and we're heading down much lower makes no sense at all. Yeah, a, a much better case would be the tether thing. And I don't even subscribe to the to the uh, to the tether thing being the only thing causing this bull market. But that's a much, much better case for a bear market than looking at the prior uh, prior length of the prior bear market. So, yes, great points. Um, Arkansas says, uh, just throwing this out there. I remember you asked on social media platform back when Bitcoin was in a bear market, um, and was falling to around 4,000 or so. What price did you think, or you asked me what price, uh, we have to go back up to, to officially start the bull market. And, and, and you said 12,000. Yeah, I kind of remember that, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. 12,000, um, obviously is a, uh, was a good predictor and Pardon me, and I do, and I do think that we are in a bull market now. I actually called it much prior to uh, to twelve thousand, but now that we are above twelve thousand, yeah, it just confirms that bias. So, and by the way, great memory, man, great memory. Um, you also say, uh, also, I know that you're not a fan of Elliott Wave in the crypto market, but uh, for just for a change of pace and for fun, can you draw some Elliott Wave? Thanks. All right, let me switch over to the chart here, and just for fun, just for you, let's see what we can do here with Elliott Wave very briefly. Now, most Elliott Wave traders, and remember guys, I am not an Elliott Wave trader and I don't claim to be an Elliott Wave expert. I did used to use it. I mean, I guess it would depend. Um, I'm probably more of an expert on Elliott Wave than 99% of the people you see on YouTube um, or out there on the internet. That being said, I know people that trade via Elliott Wave. So I, I, I am the first to tell you that I am not an Elliott Wave expert when compared to those people. Um, the, the people that are Elliott Wave experts are just, are, are brilliant. And 99.9999999% of the people that you that you hear on the internet claiming they're Elliott Wave experts, I promise you, are not. That being said, let me just so let me just do this with a disclaimer. That being said, knowing most of the people out there that are uh, um, that are trading Elliott Wave and knowing a lot of my friends, including my mentor that does sometimes use use Elliott Wave, um, I will say that most people are calling this the top. So in other words, we'd be in a um, a uh, this would be a five. We we have now seen five waves up, so we'd be looking at five sub waves. Of course, that being the overall wave one here. And by the way, if if, if anybody cares about this, please let me know. If you don't care about this, let me know this too. Um, so I will uh, I will. Um, 
uh, do this more often or do this much less if you just don't care. Personally, I don't I don't see the benefit in Elliott Wave, but uh, if you guys like it, I'll, uh, I'll certainly do it every now and then. So yeah, we'd be looking at something like this. Our one, two, uh, longer three, four, and up for the five. Of course, we all know if you if you know anything about Elliott Wave, you know the third wave is usually the longest and the strongest, and that would line up with this as well. Of course, we have a nice blow off top here, which would signal the top of our fifth wave, and this would be five sub waves up for one big larger wave one, which this would all be one big larger primary wave one which would mean what it would mean now that we'd be on a primary wave two okay so that being said we'd be looking at if this is our wave two we're going to looking for an abc correction right now if we are in an abc correction and if we're looking at just the weekly here then we're in trouble then we're looking at something like this then we're looking at this being there it is this being our a this being somewhere about our b and then our c is going to come back down here probably targeting about 8500 ish somewhere thereabouts guys so just by pure Elliott Wave standards, if this is in fact the case, looking at the weekly, the, the more likely count is going to be this ABC count. Could this proven to be correct? It could. It absolutely could. And really, until, until we take out the, the top of this high, this is, if you're an Elliott Wave trader, this is probably what you're looking at. You're probably looking at us coming back down here. Now, you could dig into this, go into the daily. And you could make an argument for a more shallow correction here. You could say, if I'm looking at this overall from our swing low to our swing high, uh, I probably took that weekly off a little bit too quickly, but if we go from the overall swing low to swing high here, you could say that we're bouncing right there off the 382. Now, if that is in fact the bottom, that's a pretty shallow bullish retrace. Most of about 60, 65% of your wave two, they're gonna correct anywhere between the 50 and the 618. So that's gonna be anywhere between about 8,500 and 7,200. That's gonna be your wave two target if you're an Elliott Wave trader. And this is why a lot of people don't think if you're an Elliott Wave trader, you don't think that this correction is over. That being said, if you're a more bullish Elliott Wave trader, let me just get rid of this to, un to declutter the, uh, the market. The way that you're justifying this being an ABC correction very likely already over, you're justifying that by zooming in here very closely to the daily, and you're looking at this. You're saying, okay, this is our A, this is our B, this was our C when we bottomed out here at about uh, 9,570. And they point to the fact that we have this nice tweezer bottom here, this nice reversal candle, which is true, which is true to be fair. And then we're continuing now to the upside. So this is gonna be the start of our primary wave three. But what we're actually looking at here, excuse me, um, if we dig in here even further, and what we actually would be looking at here, if I dig in here to the four hour, is we would be looking at, if that's our ABC, we'd be looking at our primary wave three has started, but we're looking at our sub wave one, sub wave two, and now we're coming up for our sub wave three. And we have taken out the top of this sub wave, um, uh, sub wave one there, so that sub wave three would, would can likely continue way up here. In fact, let me go ahead and give you a target for that sub wave three. If in fact we are looking at a sub wave three, that target would be somewhere around targeting the one six one eight. Um, a, a wave three usually target the one six one eight, so that's going to be somewhere up here at about uh, fourteen thousand seven hundred. And coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, sometimes as I like to say, I do believe that is the prior. Uh, that is a very, very likely prior area of resistance uh, in between that $16,200 high and our uh, $13,800 low. And yeah, we can see that right in here, we do have a lot of buy sell orders. We do have a lot of acknowledging of this area right around $14,800, which I have pointed out before. And that just so happens to pretty much coincide nicely with that 1618. So you know, sometimes Elliott Wave does work out and sometimes it is worth looking at this. But if this is in fact that if if that if that second Elliott Wave count is correct, and we have already seen the completion of that ABC correction. That is one hell of a shallow correction and one hell of a very quick correction. I think a lot of Elliott Wave traders are still looking for one more drop back down to about 8,500. So we'll have to wait and see kind of how this ends up, at least the more serious ones. Again, I know we have our moon boys on there that they can make Elliott Wave say anything that they want to. But just again, from from talking to people um, that I greatly respect and from my very non-expert opinion in Elliott Wave, I am not an expert of Elliott Wave, again, even though I would probably be considered compared to 99% of the the, uh, the Elliott Wave traders that you see on Facebook or uh, or on, on Twitter um, or YouTube. But I, that being said, by my standards, I'm nowhere close to being an expert Elliott Wave trader. But if you want to take my opinion for what it's worth, there you go. 
All right, now I'm gonna have to get going here, guys. Uh, Erno says, uh, maybe I was missing the point of the video, but I would strongly highlight the fact that we have less than a year. Yeah, you were just talking about the, this video that we had discussed, um, are we still in a bear market? And you were just enforcing the fact that uh, you believe that we are now in a bull market, pointing to uh, pointing to volume, pointing to the habiting coming up with Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I would agree with most of your points there, Arno. Um, I too believe that we're in a bull market, so hopefully I wasn't confused. You, you weren't confused by the title of that video. Um, I absolutely, if you did listen to the video, I absolutely do believe that we are in a bull market. I pointed out the volume, et cetera. One thing that I'm not sure about, and that is the happening that's coming up next year. You're absolutely right. That is going to cut the supply, cut the supply of Bitcoin that is being created from miners. But I, 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 I can see both sides of this. And I've heard very, very logical arguments on both sides. We all know the bullish side, less, uh, less supply coming out, less Bitcoin being created, less supply, more demand, higher prices. Everybody gets that. The bear side to that though, is that miners are going to, ha you're going to see less miners coming into this, guys, uh, and we're going to see transaction time start just to, uh, to skyrocket, and miners are going to be less apt to want to mine Bitcoin because the reward is not going to be quite nearly as great, and therefore you're going to see a, uh, a drop um, in price. So, you know, if we look at the happening um, at, with Litecoin, its last happening, we did see a drop in price after the happening, actually right before the happening. So we'll have to wait and see how it plays out um, for sure. Um, but I do agree with you. The demand for Bitcoin, especially in the coming year, is going to be great. Um, and uh, and, I, and I agree with your overall sentiment that uh, that we are now in a bull market um, without question, guys. So but good points. Very good points. And thank you for your contribution there. No, I really appreciate you. Um, 880 says you uh, you certainly put those perma bears and the bear market rally cry to bed with that analysis, man. Hey, thank you. And again, I'm, I'm still open to it. I just, again, I, it's just that my bias is that we are in a bull market now. I, can, I will change my bias. My bias is not written in stone. Nothing I say is ever written in stone, guys. Again, the key to air power, as I like to say, you know, as you guys roll your eyes, the key to being successful in anything is flexibility. That is the key. All right, Nicholas gives me a thumbs up. Always, or excuse me, Nikolai. I apologize, Nikolai K. Always appreciate your support, Nikolai K. Appreciate you very much, man. Uh, Twelfth Root says, little off topic, uh, topic, but could you comment on trading BTC pairs, for example? I've been thinking recently, um, is that it? Uh, is that if it's your goal to acquire more BTC or Ethereum, um, and you don't mind considered, um, and you don't, and it wouldn't. And, and then wouldn't it almost be considered a riskless trade if you don't mind? Basically, you're saying if you don't mind accumulating those coins and holding them for the long haul, trading between Bitcoin and Ethereum is a riskless trade. This is your argument, is a riskless trade because you're, if you get stuck in either or, you don't mind holding them. And yes, I understand that logic. And if you think that they're going to be, uh, if you're bullish on both of those, which I am bullish on both of those, certainly bullish on Bitcoin a uh, little bit, um, bu bullish on Ethereum as well, but not nearly as much as I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm bullish on Bitcoin far and away more than any other coin like by 10,000 fold but I am still a theory that I am still bullish on ethereum that being said I've, if you're looking to accumulate a coin I would I would definitely err more on the side of accumulating Bitcoin over ethereum that being said if it is your goal to accumulate both then of course it would be a riskless trade to sit there and trade back and forth when one spikes you trade for the other and vice versa uh, now, again, I, because I think Bitcoin is going to do so much better than most people think, I do think you could get trapped into that, guys. And so you'd want to make uh, in 12th route. So I'd want you'd want to make sure that your that your um, your technical analysis skills, your trading skills are up to par. And what I would do is I, I, I would consider uh, paper trading. I would look at paper trading as much as you can before I would consider uh, doing anything like that. Before I, I would make sure that your skills are up to par and that you understand where the tops and where the valleys are on both on that pair, on that BTC Ethereum pair. Once you can trade, once you can paper trade that correctly, then transition into actually using real coins in this, you know, I was gonna say fiat, but in this case it would be real cryptocurrency, real value, I, I guess I should say. All right, Mr. Sylvia, we talked, Mr. Sylvia. Mr. Sylvia is a, uh, a former helicopter pilot man. Uh, rock on, man. That is awesome. Um, and I appreciate your conversation, man. It's always great to hear from you, man. And please uh, don't be a stranger. All right, quickly, and I apologize, I'm having to skim through these comments very, very quickly, guys. Uh, T. Gribble says, traps, not seeing it. Some say 16,000. I'm leaning towards 18,000. I'm thinking a statement is going to be made. You may be right. Um, I, I personally think that we are going to see some resistance at uh, uh, possibly at that 13,800. We'll have to wait and see. Actually, if we get above 13,000, then I think there's a good chance that we just fly right through 13,800. But we'll have to see. Remember, that is that golden pocket there at 13,800. So, you know, finding some resistance there is certainly a possibility. But I do think once we break above that, 
that, yes, my target is going to lean towards about 16,200, but I don't think it's going to be a straight shot to 162. I do think that it may, we're, we're going to see, we're going to see a little bit of a pause somewhere around that 16,000, six, or excuse me, 14,600 to 14,800 uh, area. I do think it'll probably consolidate, maybe a little bit of a pullback there, and then a continuation up to about that 16,200, uh, $200 area where I would expect it to find some resistance there. Uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Sylvia, there he is again, uh, says your TA was down to the penny. I got greedy and set an order to buy at 12, 12,200 something, uh, not 12,400, missed it, but was still able to get in a good price this morning um, in relation to um, how much I sold. Congratulations, man. Rock on, dude. And I wish you uh, all the best, man. Excellent success. Uh, 12th Root says uh, something weird happened to the audio. Yeah, I know. We talked about the audio. I, again, I apologize about that audio yesterday, guys. Uh, let's see. Kane says, thank you for your extra effort. Certainly, um, I do strongly take on board what you say before making my decisions. I've raised, um, um, uh, I am more, or I have realized I am more of a risk taker than good, uh, than your good self. I got very strong gut feeling in this market and was looking to move up from around 11.8 to 11.9, bought full position. But yeah, he's basically saying he bought a little bit earlier than uh, than what I remember. When I tell you something to wait for a confirmation, I'm saying this because I want to be responsible with you guys. I don't ever want to, you know, I, this is never financial advice. Obviously, anything you do is on you. It's not on me. It's 100% on you. So you take all the credit or you take all the uh, um, all the flack if you end up losing money. It's never on me. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just some dude on the internet. And if you choose to listen to me, then excellent. I would say 99.999% of the people on the internet are completely full of crap. So take the, and so take that with a grain of salt, including myself. Um, and you know, I, I don't sell anything, so I really don't have a stake in this game. Um, but uh, most of the people that are full of crap are, are trying to sell you something. So if, if someone's telling you something, and especially if they're not willing to um, to, to show you that they're actually buying and selling um, their particular product um, and they're trying to sell you something without showing you what they're buying and selling themselves, be very, very, very aware. Be very, very scary. I sell you nothing, so you know, take take my. Uh, you you can think I'm full of crap, or you can think I'm a genius. Whatever you think is whatever you think. It's not going to hurt my feelings at all. I don't make any money on this. I don't do this to make money. I do this as a way to give back to the community. But uh, my point in all this, I don't mean to get off on a tangent, Kane. This I don't know how I got into all that. My point in all this is, if you're if if you feel strongly about something, you've done your due diligence. You feel good about your uh, you feel good about your technical analysis, and you see an opportunity, and you don't want to wait for that conservative confirmation break. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. I don't say that on my YouTube channel because I don't ever want to be responsible because even as much as I say I'm not a financial advisor, I know some people are going to try to listen to this and try to trade off what I say. So I try to be extremely conservative with what I say because I don't ever want people to lose money as much as I know that's not my responsibility. I just, I, I, I've been there, I've lost money in the past and it's a terrible feeling. So I try to, you know, I try to be as conservative as I can. That being said, if you see an opportunity and you feel strongly about it, by all means, man, go for it and tell me about it. I want to hear about it. Sounds like you you made an excellent call, Candy. And, and rock on, dude. Congratulations. I'm very, very happy for you. Uh, Jake says, we didn't break uh, out on July the 19th. He, he, aren't, uh, we aren't even on July 10th that we broke out. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, I wasn't calling for a breakout on July the 19th, so I'm not sure what Jake uh, what Jake is referring to here, but uh, maybe you're confusing me with another analyst. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Kinko, or Kiko, in fact, I even, I, I called for a breakout two days ago, um, then we got that breakout yesterday. So again, I'm not uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, Kinko says, Weekly has formed a uh, beautiful triangle pennant with BTC stopping at the six, uh, 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 618 FIB. Seems to be forming an ABC pattern, which could possibly retrace to that 786 FIB level, and then 5,000. So, yeah, we talks about the ABC pattern with that Elliott wave pattern um, on the weekly, possibly retracing. I don't think it would, tra would retrace down to about 5,500 as you're suggesting. I think a retracement possibly down to about 8,500. Um, excuse me, guys. Stand by one second. Okay, back with you. Sorry about that, guys. I uh, needed a quick drink of water. But yeah, I think a retrace to about 8,500 would be much more probable if, in fact, that is the case. Uh, I'd be looking for a bounce about 8,500, and that coincides, you'll find that coincides nicely with about the 50 fib. Um, but could we go down to that uh, 78.6? Yeah, certainly possible. I mean, anything is possible, but but I, I'd be very surprised. Uh, let's see, Thelma, even if we did get that breakdown further, I do think that 8,500 would very, very likely be um, the area where I'd be going in very heavy looking for a strong bounce. But again, that's not even my bias as of right now. Uh, Thelma says BTC possibly forming ABC. Oh, so Thelma says the same thing. So you and Thelma should talk. Uh, Anthony Calvo, new subscriber here. Heard about uh, uh, heard about you from another trader that I subscribe to. I'm I'm new 
to trading scene. Uh, so I, um, I need all the advice I can get, by the way, try to send you. Okay. Yeah, we talked about this. And by the way, thank you again. I, I know I initially thanked you, Anthony, but I, I, I greatly, greatly appreciate you sending me a tip. Um, and I know most of you that tip me, you do it, uh, you do it anonymously, but, um, but I would, I would like to personally thank you if you do. So if you're comfortable with that, which I understand why you wouldn't be, but if you are, let me know who sent me the tip so I know who to thank. And Anthony, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you here. And thank you. Thank you very, very much for the tip guys. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, wishing you all the best here. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, appreciate an upvote. If you have enjoyed this content, please remember to subscribe, like, and hit that bell in the bottom right-hand corner for notifications. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.